welcome to the lecture on introduction and classification of rolling processes. So, now we will uh, move towards the discussion about the rolling process. Uh, uh, you must have uh, the idea about the rolling process which we discussed sometimes that uh, you know in the rolling process uh, we use the rolls which are normally you know cylindrical uh, in nature. So, they are very very hard extremely hard rolls and these rolls are rotating uh, in the opposite direction and uh, the work is fed in between the rolls. Now, when uh, they are going to touch the roll at that time uh, you know they are touching in a larger you know their thickness is more, but because of the friction basically and since they are moving in the opposite direction. So, because of the friction which is there between the work piece and the roll they are uh, forced in uh, into the basically uh, what happens that you have uh, the rolls you have uh, normally this this way you have circular rolls and uh, what happens that these rolls. So, they will have this common center this is the center point and uh, the so, this will be rotating in this direction and this will be rotating in this direction. So, this is basically in the opposite direction this is moving in this direction this is moving in this direction and the work piece is basically fed from here and once it goes here. So, you will have frictional forces acting at this place and because of this friction the frictional force will be acting in that direction and this friction force basically will uh, push this uh, uh, st stock uh, into in between the rolls and ultimately the roll will uh, come uh, inside and uh, then it will be going out. So, while going out its thickness uh, suppose here it is uh, this is h 1. So, this will be going as h 2. So, uh, the height or thickness of the slab or the stock material is getting reduced and basically it is um, theoretically equal to the gap between uh, these rolls. So, this is roll gap. So, this is uh, normally a rolling process and these rolls are extremely I mean hard they are made of hard materials and uh, this is used for basically uh, you know converting these uh, ingots uh, or to make the slab or slab further to make billets or, or then and then finally, we are making the seats also from these rolls. So, based upon the temperature we uh, classify this rolling process as uh, hot rolling or cold rolling depending upon the temperature at which we do this uh, processing operation. So, if it is done at uh, a temperature higher than its recrystallization temperature it will be hot rolling otherwise it will be um, the cold rolling. Now, in the industries you have uh, uh, if you talk about uh, the, the large industries uh, even in earlier days or even now. So, now they use uh, to make the ingots now these ingots basically are uh, further processed and uh, you make uh, the different uh, shapes of the products you know different cross section different size based upon the different sizes you you define those uh, you know um, uh, you know products. So, uh, what we see is that uh, uh, the raw process of uh, plastically deforming metals by passing it in between the rolls. So, that is known as rolling then uh, work piece is subjected to uh, very high compressive stress due to the squeezing action of the rolls. So, rolls are basically squeezing on the metal and uh, because of that uh, and the surface shear stress uh, there will be uh, you know shear stress is developed and uh, because of the friction between the roll and the metal and that basically is uh, you know useful or responsible for uh, doing the plastic deformation uh, you know in the material. So, initial breakdown of ingots ingot is uh, basically it will be breakdown to the blooms or billets. So, in that basically the degree of uh, reduction is quite high you have to deform uh, 
you know, appreciably. So in that, that is done uh, at the high temperature and, and that is basically under the, you know, umbrella of hot rolling processes because there it has to deform, uh, uh, you know, to large extent. And then further uh, when you are going to define, I mean uh, to roll to get the final shape uh, and uh, size or so and when the dimensional accuracy is uh, required, the finish is required. In those cases we go for the uh, cold rolling. So, um, uh, and uh, then we can go for the uh, uh, hot rolling. Uh, for so, first of all, you have to convert to the simpler shapes like blooms or billets, and then you can go for uh, you know uh, making the plates, seats, rods, or bars or pipes, so they can be you know hot rolled, and uh, uh, you have many a times you you make many products by the um, uh, rolling process by making the you know proper size you know. Uh, type of uh, roll in that roll you have uh, that type of roof geometry is there. So, based on that that kind of cross sectional product can be produced. So, you have uh, coal um, that is a hot rolling and cold rolling will be producing the sheet strip and foil with good uh, surface finish and uh, you have uh, the increased uh, mechanical strength. So, as uh, you know that whenever we talk about the cold forming methods like cold rolling or, or, or any cold uh, you know forming method. Uh, in those cases the you know it is done to finally shape the material to very smaller thicknesses and in that case basically because of the cold forming the strength is increased because of the strain hardening. So, and also the finish is better because when you are at this lower temperature side the chances of scale formation will be smaller the chances of surface uh, oxidation will be smaller and, and that way uh, uh, we go for these uh, uh, cold rolling of the uh, materials. Now, uh, based upon uh, you know we try to define uh, these uh, products. So, uh, you have uh, like uh, bloom. So, the bloom is basically uh, it is the when we first break down this ingot. So, that is known as bloom. So, this is the first breakdown product breakdown product of ingot. So, normally it is uh, cross sectional area is greater than 230 uh, centimeter square and uh, also uh, its uh, width will be equal to its uh, thickness. So, and its cross sectional area will be you know uh, more than 230 centimeter square. So, that is what uh, normally we specify the bloom as. Then uh, further when we uh, uh, do the reduction of uh, dimension of this uh, bloom then we get the billet. So, we get this billet and uh, we have the minimum cross section area of uh, these billets uh, and that is uh, 40 mm by 40 mm. So, this way uh, you have the smaller products uh, that is known as uh, billet. Similarly, you have the slab and uh, slab is basically the you know hot rolled ingot. with uh, cross sectional area greater than 100 centimeter square and width is at least twice the thickness. So, this way these uh, bloom billets and slabs uh, they are you know uh, defined and then uh, comes the sheet metals uh, you know which are the very fine uh, you know less thick uh, products and uh, they are uh, into the you know normally you will go for the finishing uh, mill products and uh, there you have uh, you know plate and uh, sheet and uh, so there you will get this uh, plate and sheet. Now, plate has the thickness more than 6 mm and uh, normally uh, if it is less than uh, 6 mm then uh, you know uh, it is sheet. So, plate has thickness 
more than 6 mm and if it is a sheet it has thickness less than 6 mm. So, this is what uh, the classification of the plate and uh, uh, sheet is and when we talk about the strip. So, normally the, uh, the strip is also the roll product and its width is not more than 600 uh, mm. So, so that is what uh, uh, the sheet is of uh, you know larger uh, uh, width. So, that is known as uh, the strip. So, the strip will be basically refer referred as the product with not greater than more than I mean 600 mm width whereas, the sheet will be of uh, uh, having the larger width than that. So, this way you have uh, basically um, the different uh, types of uh, products. Uh, there is also certain uh, you know uh, process known as powder rolling where the powder is in between the rolls and then they are basically you know uh, they are in between uh, these rolls and compacted into a green strip and then that is further sintered and then uh, that way you make these uh, uh, powder rolling of the materials. So, so this way uh, you classify the different types of uh, you know products which are made from uh, these rolling uh, you know processes. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, where the, the shop where there is uh, or these are these machines are there where the rolling process is carried out they are known as the rolling mills. So, you have uh, the setups uh, where the, the rolling process is uh, being uh, carried out and uh, it will be consisting of uh, the, the rolls. So, uh, the rolling mill will be consisting of rolls, bearings, drives for applying power to rolls and controlling the speed of rolls. So, that is how a setup will be there you as we know that uh, in the uh, rolling mill you have uh, uh, you must have the means to rotate these rolls. So, for that you have the you know the drive for applying power to the rolls then uh, you may have to control the speed of these rolls. So, sometimes you have to control because at what speed the you know material is coming or stock is coming from one side. So, based on that you have to control the speed of the rolls. So, you must have the controlling mechanism for the speed and uh, uh, so this is what a rolling mill and that place where these machines are there where the rolling process is going on continuously. So, that is known as the uh, you know rolling mills. Now, coming to the different types of uh, mills as we know that in, uh, in the case of uh, rolling as we have seen uh, if you take the simplest type of rolling mill now you see here. So, now in this case in now here. So, in this case uh, these are the two rolls and uh, they are as we see that they are rotating in opposite direction this is rotating in the anti clockwise and this is rotating in the clockwise direction. So, and then you as you see we have seen that uh, your uh, um, uh, stock which is there. So, it will be coming from this side and ultimately it will be coming out. So, they are known as the two high rolling mill because you have two rolls which are used for um, you know uh, deforming the work piece. Uh, so, that is why it is known as two high roll mill. Then uh, there is two high reversing mill. Now, the thing is that uh, in this case there is only entry from this side. So, the, the, the material which is rolled in this direction now it has to be further fed into uh, you know at, at this place only there is no feeding from this side because the, the, the speed you know is uh, of the direction of the you know movement of this rolls is fixed. So, these, these are moving in this direction. So, you have only to feed from this direction. So, it is known as too high whereas, if we uh, if we try to uh, save the time because you have to uh, if you have to further change it is uh, you know do the reduction you have to bring this side and then do it. Now, in this case what we do is uh, you have to this in this area you can see that you have feeding from both the sides. So, you feed from this side its reduction is done you can adjust its uh, uh, gap between the rolls and then further you can uh, give the entry uh, you know from uh, this side. So, so, this way 
uh, your uh, in, in one go itself. So, from here it will go then you have to reverse its uh, you know direction of rotation. So, it will be starting rotating now in this direction and this will be rotating in this direction. So, and, and the metal will be fed in this direction. So, depending upon the gap in between the roll which is adjusted uh, uh, after one stage you will have uh, the further you know uh, reduction of its uh, uh, dimension and it will be reduced to the smaller size. So, this is known as too high reversing mill and that, that is what it is this is uh, too high reversing mill. Then uh, coming to uh, the 3 high mill. So, now in, in the case of 3 high mill as we see that uh, this uh, in this the, these uh, there are rolling process going on at, at these two places and you are using the 3 rolls and if you look at uh, uh, this. So, if you see that this is rotating in one direction uh, and this will be opposite to it and this will be opposite to this. So, ultimately this is uh, uh, and this. So, this is moving like this and this is moving like this. So, they have the similar you know uh, movement direction they are rotating in the same direction, but whereas this is opposite to both because uh, the metal will be coming suppose from this side and it will go here and from here it will move and it will go here. So, basically uh, uh, you have not to reverse the you know um, uh, direction of the rotation of the uh, rolls, but you can see that they are fed from one side and they are fed from other side. So, this way uh, the you can have uh, at two places the, the there is movement of the you know so uh, the slabs or the billets which is getting reduced. So, this is known as the 3 high uh, you know rolling mill where the 3 rolls are used for the deformation. Then you have this is known as the 4 high rolling mill. So, that is here this is uh, 4 high rolling mill. Now, if you look at the 4 high rolling mill again it has 4 rolls which are used for the deformation. Now, in this case what happens that if suppose uh, you, you have these 2 rolls they are the rolls which do the deformation whereas, these are the rolls which are the backup rolls they are basically giving the support they are giving the support to or rigidity, rigidity to these rolls. So, so that is why since we are using these, these 4 rolls we call it as the 4 high uh, rolling mills uh, and, uh, and this way you have uh, because this will be certainly moving in, in this direction and this will be moving in this direction. So, that way uh, they will be taking the you know stock from this side and then the finished product will be going in the you know other side. Another example of uh, the, you know on the rolling mill is the cluster mill. So, it is a cluster arrangement and in this case uh, it is being supported by all these rolls and then this uh, you know uh, you know this type of uh, reduction takes place in such mills known as cluster mill. So, what we see uh, suppose in this cluster mill or if you look at the 4 high uh, rolling mills here actually the, the size of the roll which is doing the deformation is small and basically the smaller rolls uh, the power requirement uh, will be you know smaller, but then uh, it is uh, it has to be given it will have lesser strength. So, it will be given that strength and rigidity support by these uh, you know backup rolls and they are supported by these large diameter backup rolls in, in such uh, cases. Coming to another kind of uh, you know now what this is the uh, a case of you know the here you, you see that this is a uh, you know continuous uh, continuously you see that uh, uh, this uh, ingot is coming uh, I mean it is of larger dimension and this not in gut basically may be slash billet or slab and then ultimately you see that this it is converted into a strip, strip. So, this is basically a continuous type of mill. Now, see that you have many mills this is one mill this is second mill this and you have a further mill. So, you have continuous you know mill and you ultimately make the strip. So, this is basically a strip rolling mill and uh, basically otherwise you have to take uh, from here to next mill and then further arrange further you know the next one or so, but you can have 
such kind of uh, arrangement which is known as the continuous uh, you know uh, mill where uh, if you look at this dimension is getting changed every after passing every you know mill and uh, you have um, uh, ultimately you see that you you get this strip uh, being produced of a very small thickness so this is known as the you know uh, you know continuous mill for finding the strip and here you must be having certain con concept about it because you must be knowing that when it goes basically uh, its speed will be larger than the speed of the rolls. So, then th th this is speed at which it will be moving this will be the in incoming velocity while entry. So, what happens in the rolls uh, we did not discuss that way that when we talk about the rolls. Uh, now, in the case of uh, rolls uh, uh, when we see now in, in such cases suppose uh, now this is how the roll is. Now, what happens that uh, now if this is the center. So, this is your this angle which is there that angle is known as the angle of bite. Now, the thing is that when it is coming inside now uh, it because of the friction it will be going uh, you know towards uh, uh, this side and then uh, uh, while it is leaving uh, and because of the you know um, you know constancy of volume what happens that the velocity with which it is uh, moving it will be you know uh, smaller I mean uh, larger because if the width is uh, you know same. So, the cross sectional area uh, and, and the velocity that will be your volumetric flow rate. So, the since the thickness is reducing so, and, and width is the same. So, in that case your velocity has to be maintained. So, velocity will be more while exit while coming it will have lesser velocity because the frictional force is acting. It means at one point uh, you will have a plane at which the velocity will be same as the velocity of the roll and, and that is why that plane is known as the neutral plane. Now, this is known as the uh, angle of bite. So, basically uh, this way now uh, what we mean to say that the velocity will be changing. Now, uh, in the case of these uh, uh, continuous rolling uh, uh, mill uh, where we fi directly find uh, get the strip in that case you will have to have uh, you know the you know calculation to see that at what velocity is coming here and with what velocity it is going out. Now, the velocity with which it is going out will be the entry point for this roll and then, then that velocity will be different here. So, this way you will have to have that calculation and based on that you will have the rolling speed uh, to be maintained and, and you can uh, get these uh, you know uh, type of uh, uh, you know strips uh, in, in one go you are getting uh, from uh, this uh, raw you know shape to the strip production. Then uh, you have uh, another kind of uh, you know uh, rolling the where we use these uh, planetary rolls and this is known as a planetary rolling uh, mill. So, this is planetary mill. Now, in this case as you see these rolls uh, uh, you see that this is the backing roll and these are the rolls which are doing the deformation. And uh, basically as you see that their uh, movement direction is also shown and this what happens that this is directly converted into very thin sheet or strip. Now, what happens that slowly this will be coming up then after that another will come. So, this, so this way you will have uh, it is uh, you know at, at this point the clearance between these two rolls is very very small. So, based on that basically uh, you, you can have um, the production of very thin you know sheets uh, possible by the use of these uh, planetary rolling mills because this is like a planet it is these rolls are there on the backing roll. So, that is why its name is planetary roll and, uh, and this way you can get uh, these uh, you know formation of very thin uh, you know product uh, in the rolling operation. So, uh, basically uh, it is also something like uh, you know it is like a forging process because it will come and it will forge and then it will move. So, that way uh, also it is like a forging rather than rolling process you can say uh, in such cases. 
Now, uh, uh, as we discussed that uh, depending upon the temperature, we uh, try to define this rolling process also as the uh, either hot rolling or the uh, cold rolling. So, now uh, when uh, to use the hot rolling and when to use the uh, cold rolling. Now, as you know that uh, uh, in case of hot rolling, uh, we, we will adopt this hot rolling. Uh, normally, you have the roughing mills are there. So, when uh, your uh, degree of reduction has to be quite high initially, you, the ingot is to be converted to slab and, and, and uh, you know surface uh, finish is not the criteria. Basic, basic criteria is to reduce the you know cross section to reduce the thickness. In that case, you go for the uh, uh, hot rolling and normally uh, what we go do is uh, normally we use the two high reversing mills uh, for uh, this hot rolling and the uh, you know roll diameter is from 0.6 to 1.4 uh, meter of the uh, you know that uh, roll and uh, uh, you have uh, you know uh, reversing uh, you know uh, you know planning mills. So, uh, in those cases normally uh, the purpose is that uh, as we discussed that uh, in the case of uh, hot rolling since we do at higher temperature. So, in these cases uh, the surface roughness will be there because there will be chances of uh, surface oxidation, there will be chances of certain you know uh, uh, because we have discussed that in, in, in these processes what happens that when we go for subsequent uh, you know uh, rolling. In that case, because the scales are formed on the surface, they may be trapped uh, in between the roll surface, and so there will may be the trapment of these oxides in between the metal surface and the rolls. So that that may be you know in between. So there may be indentation on the, on, on the you know surfaces of the metal, and and so uh, where we go for hot rolling whenever you you need to. Uh, so that's why basically the roughening operation basically. And uh, the cold rolling basically is uh, uh, normally you have the finishing operation. So, you have uh, you know high speed four high tandem mills are normally used. So, uh, with 3 to 5 strands are used for the cold rolling of steel, aluminum or, 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 or like copper alloys. And uh, 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 in the plant uh, uh, you will see that uh, these uh, thinner sheets which are used as uh, you know in, in place of the asbestos seeds you can see that these corrugated seeds are there. Now, they are made by these uh, you know cold rolling uh, uh, mills they are not made by the uh, hot rolling uh, whereas, when we are trying to deform where the degree of deformation is larger uh, in those cases you go for the uh, hot rolling mill and uh, you can have uh, uh, different type of uh, rolling mill arrangement which can do these hot rolling normally you have two high and two high reversing which is used for uh, the you know uh, uh, rolling mills. And uh, once you are further uh, converting the ingot, uh, the ingot to bloom or then to slab or the billet and all that. So, that is uh, done in uh, succession. The temperature which is done in the case of hot rolling for the steel is normally 1100 to 1300 uh, degree centigrade. So, as you know that at this high temperature uh, you will have more chances of formation of the scales. So, uh, so uh, we you have to see that uh, where to finish the, the last finishing strand what should be the temperature because uh, you cannot uh, do the uh, finishing at a larger temperature range larger temperature side because that will lead to the growth of the grains inside uh, the structure. So, normally we try to see that uh, the last finishing strand the temperature should be uh, from 700 to 900 uh, should be there. So, initial this will be initial temperature and in the final uh, you know uh, you know final finishing stages you have 700 to 900 degrees centigrade is uh, kept. So, that you have fine uh, you know equiaxed uh, ferrite grains which are to be obtained. Now, in the uh, you know degree of reduction will be you know achievable more in the case of hot rolling whereas, in the case of cold rolling the degree of reduction is normally 
less uh, uh, maybe from 50 to 90 percent is reported uh, in the case of uh, the cold rolling. And uh, also you have uh, to see that uh, you know um, uh, you have uh, to see that how much should be the reduction in every stage because during the cold rolling your strain hardening uh, you know takes place. So, uh, how much you should uh, do the cold rolling that is uh, required to be you know uh, analyzed otherwise that may lead to basically the um, you know uh, uh, brittleness of the seat and that may you know uh, develop the anisotropy in the material and that may uh, lead to the failure of the material. So, so that way uh, you have to balance you have to see that how much degree of reduction is required uh, you know uh, in the last pass to permit the better control of flatness gaze or the surface finish in the case of cold rolling. So, this is about uh, in the introduction about the hot rolling and the cold rolling operations. We will discuss about the uh, analysis part in our next subsequent lectures. Thank you very much. Music